Hi, I'm Sarah. This is my co-pilot, Bo. We're out here in Bulldog Canyon in Mesa, Arizona, and this is my bus. So welcome to the interior of my house. Um, as you can see, I can stand up fully in here, which is awesome. I put two inches of insulation in the floor, walls, and ceiling. Um, when I bought the bus, I could stand up just barely in here. And for a while, I was like, okay, well, I just won't insulate it. But that wasn't going to work. So I bought a John boat from a 13-year-old in Trout Creek, Montana. And I installed it on my roof so I could stand up in here. Um, I only cut one support beam, which goes across right here. But the John boat extends back, which let me have this storage. So to install the boat, the first thing that I had to do was like cut each corner of it and hammer out a flange basically. So when I flipped it over on top of my roof, there was about four inches of space to drill roofing screws into it through the top. Um, so the first thing I did was hammer out the flange and then I popped it up on top and I traced out the whole outline, figured out where this middle part was and then measured in from there where the hole would be. Um, and that was pretty much it. And then once it was the whole giant hole was in my roof, which was terrifying. The boat flipped up on top and I put a ton of butyl tape, which is like roofing putty, um, self-tapping roofing screws with rubber washers, a whole bunch of flex seal and caulking, and it's been bomb proof ever since. So in the kitchen, I have my little two burner propane top. Um, I really wanted an oven in my build, but when it came down to it, I got this thing for free from a neighbor and an oven takes up a lot of space. So I ended up keeping this and I've actually learned how to make like skillet pizza and nachos and actually bake like cornbread on my stovetop. So I love this little thing. Um, directly underneath here is the propane, um, just a little 20 gallon propane tank. Um, my sink is just a little wash tub that operates on a little foot pump down here and that drains directly out of my wheel well. I used to have a gray water tank and it was just gnarly and it smelled pretty bad. Um, so now it drains right out at the bottom of the bus and if I'm ever somewhere where I need to have gray water collected, I'll just put like a little bucket underneath there and then kind of spray it um, over plants or something. Also underneath here, I have my cooler and then just a bunch of cleaning stuff um, and my fresh water. I have seven gallons of fresh water that I can just take out and fill up. The seven gallons of water will last me about a week and a half to two weeks. Um, and this seven gallons is just for dishes. I also have a seven gallon tank that's for drinking water. Um, so I don't feel like I ever run out of water super quick. I'm pretty good at conserving it. If I ever do run out of dishwater water, I will wash my dishes with like a spray bottle of apple cider vinegar and another spray bottle of water. Um, so that's perfect. And I chose to go with a cooler because I am of the train of thought where the more electrical components you have, the more things can go wrong and break. Um, I love my cooler. It's not a problem for me to get ice since I'm going into town if I'm boondocking like once every week or two. Um, I don't really eat a lot of meat, so everything in there stays cool and fine. And I also buy like organic eggs that don't really need to be refrigerated. So it's worked out perfectly for me and I can just take it right out of here, open my emergency window and drain my cooler out the side if I ever need to do that. So I recently rebuilt this kitchen. Um, it used to be a little bit shorter and it used to come at a sharp angle like this way. Um, but I really wanted my bus to look like a little adobe casita sort of place. So um, I just made this big rounded wall by kerfing plywood essentially, which is when you cut a bunch of holes just down to the first layer of veneer in, in plywood and then it, it bends up almost like an accordion. It was, it took me many tries to get it right, but it eventually worked. And it also, I think just allows the space to flow better and you're not banging your hips on a crazy wide angle. So this backsplash I love is actually just peel and stick vinyl tile from Etsy. Um, and I put a couple layers of matte polyurethane over it so that it stays better because I know that these vinyl tiles can peel off for people. Um, it's super easy to clean and it's obviously lightweight because it's not real tile. This is my little spice herb cabinet thing. I have my bowls up here, all my little wooden spoons. Um, I love herbal medicine, so these are all wild-crafted herbs that I foraged myself. Um, my other regular eating utensils, hot sauce, salt, pepper, 
some other random things and all my spices under here just kind of screw off. Um, and the, the lids are screwed up into the top rather than being glued or anything. Um, so they stay up there perfect, perfect. If, if anything, like this red pepper has fallen a few times, but it's only the red pepper. I wouldn't be able to tell you why. Um, nothing has ever fallen out of the top here, which is awesome. These cups sometimes come loose and, and bang around, but I wouldn't change anything about this. I love it. It's basically just, you know, one pine board and then another pine board that is cut to about four inches in the back and then two inches in front, glued and then nailed in. And then it's also screwed into this back plate over here. And this bracket is just for some extra um, sturdiness. With the whole bus thing, it, or living in a bus, it was like I knew from such a young age it was what I wanted to do. And there was just that feeling that it was always going to happen when it was supposed to happen. And then I got in a car accident and wrecked my beautiful Jeep Cherokee Sport, my 99 Jeep Cherokee that I cher cherished and adored. Um, that was wrecked. I came into the insurance money and then it was like, okay, well, I've been saying since I was 14 years old that this is what I want to do. And I have this money that's been presented to me, so now is the time to do it. And that was just the, that, that insurance money was the catalyst for me to actually sit down, do the research, figure out what vehicle was going to work for me and what I really wanted. And then it was just like a no-brainer. When I had the bus and I was driving it back, it was that feeling of like, wow, I'm a homeowner and I'm going to do this. And at the time, like I said, I was, you know, I was in a relationship that wasn't going super well and I was paying rent and I was going to massage school and I was finishing my bachelor's of science degree online and raising a puppy and every single weekend is when I would look at my paycheck and, and take whatever money was left over after bills to build out my bus and it was like 60 bucks a weekend like it was nothing so it was just like it was just that feeling of knowing it's what I wanted to do and having the opportunity to do it and it was like okay now's the time let's roll This is my little dinette uh, eating and work table. Um, I'm a beginner silversmith, so I kind of, on this little wobbly table, make some rings and jewelry. Um, it works great for now. I actually didn't have this up until recently. This whole area was just one big bench, and I kind of went in there and hacked it apart so I could have two little separate areas. And this is supposed to go down into, like, back into the bench but I put plaster on it, so now it's a little bit too thick for that to happen, so I kind of have to sand it down and make it fit again. Um, under here, this is just on a little hinge, I have all my electrical stuff, so my solar batteries under here, my charge controller. I have a little basket that holds like my laptop and a little solar radio and a bunch of other little random things. And the other bench um, is not on a hinge, it just sort of pops off, but that's all like my toilet, toiletry stuff and dog food, et cetera, et cetera. When I sit here for long periods of time, normally I don't sit in this seat unless it's cold and I have my wood stove burning because it's really cozy. Normally I sit back in that corner um, and I can just kind of lean up against the window and the wall and it's super cozy. This is like three inch memory foam cushions. So I could sit here for days on end if I had to. I've slept on it when it was a bench. It is super duper cozy. I love it. I was going to build a backrest on this side, but um, I figured with airflow for the stove, it just wouldn't have worked out. Um, but yeah, it's cozy. I love it. It's great. And it's all the storage that I could need. This is my record player station. Um, everyone who sees this thinks that I'm absolutely insane for having it in here. Other than the boat, this is probably the first thing that I built in here. Um, like I mentioned earlier, everything that I own lives with me in this bus. And I spent many years of my youth digging through random bins at thrift stores and garage sales and record stores to find all of these. Um, so there was no way that I was getting rid of them. It was, they're coming with me. Um, they're all pretty much beat to crap anyway, so I'm, I'm not worried about um, you know, changes in air temperature, humidity, or anything ruining, ruining them because they're just not in the best shape to begin with. I love sitting here and listening to records. Um, I only have a little 300 watt inverter that plugs into a 12 volt outlet. I don't have a huge 
crazy 2000 watt inverter or anything. So I'll just plug that in right behind me right here and run my record player and listen to records all day long while I sit at this table and do whatever I do. So as you can see on these windows, I have screens and I have screens on every single window except this emergency exit and that emergency exit in my kitchen. Um, and that's because on the outside, there's these weird lips that you can't really fit a screen over. Um, so these are just, I just went and picked up like screen track from Home Depot, cut it to size and cut screen in there and drilled it in with some storm clips and they've held up really well. Um, I just, you know, can move this up and down, obviously close it. These curtains are just two dowels with fabric glued between them. Um, but these windows are tinted, so it's not, you can't see into them super well when it's dark out. Um, or even in general, like looking out from the inside, you have to get up pretty close to my bus to be able to be like, who's in there? But I love these curtains. Um, I dyed them myself with chaga mushroom and they're just linen with some blue ribbon. And this is just another little piece of ribbon that keeps it rolled up and tied. This is my wood stove. This is how I heat my entire bus if I'm ever in a winter climate. Um, two winters ago, I was living in Taos, New Mexico up at the ski valley and I had this thing ripping every single day and I was in here in shorts and a tank top. Um, it's built by a company called Northwoods Fabrication and I cannot recommend them enough. It's just a little eighth inch steel stove. So it gets super hot, super quick. Um, it's just a single walled pipe that goes up through my roof and out into a Dickinson exit gasket. Um, I installed a little damper, obviously, to try and make the wood burn a little bit slower. Um, the, what is this called? The heat shield <laughs> is just um, a steel, stainless steel duct that my dad salvaged from his work. So I was super lucky to get that. Um, cut it down, shaped it to look like mountains and just stuck it up there with one inch spacers. I can touch this when the stove is going as hot as it possibly can and this is not hot at all which is awesome and the stove just sits on some nice ceramic tile that hopefully match the kitchen um, underneath here in the winter time or if i'm in a winter climate is all wood storage so i'll just chop a whole bunch of wood and stack it underneath here um, right now it's just my basket of doodads i have my fire extinguisher my little broom a couple candles bungee cords kind of anything that just needs to go out of view goes in here. For firewood, um, like when I was living in Taos, I would just buy four bundles whenever I was down in town. Um, and I chopped them up really small with this and also my circular saw. So I'd go outside and I'd just chop everything into, you know, little kindling size and then take my circular saw and just saw all those pieces in half. I personally love chopping firewood, so it was never an issue for me. Unless I felt sick, that was the one thing where it was like, oh my God, I don't want to go out into five degree snowy weather right now and chop wood. Um, but something about just like chopping it and starting your own fire to warm your house is, is, has always been a really special feeling for me. Um, I went with a wood stove over a diesel heater simply for the ambiance of it. Um, it has this little window, which I love when it's nighttime, you can see the glow of the fire, you can hear the crackling of it. Um, and also it seemed practical for me if I was ever in a situation where like recently I was trapped in Texas in, a, in an ice storm and I could have gone out and just found firewood and started a little fire. Um, I don't know. I just, I love it. I'm sure that it obviously takes up a lot of room, but it's just me and my dog in here and, and I could, I could justify putting the wood stove in there over having a little square diesel heater or something. The only time smoke gets in is if I open it when it's raging and sometimes the the draw from the smokestack isn't enough so a little bit of smoke will get in here but it clears out pretty quick um it's only gotten too hot in here a few times um and i would have to open like my uh, my emergency window for a few minutes or i'll just open the flue and the air intake all the way and it'll just burn out super fast um, but again i love it i wouldn't change it for anything i've never had any problems with it it's worked great for me so looking back to 14 year old me who wanted to live on the road and not conform to the nine to five life script of you know going to school and having kids and getting married and blah 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 
bus life has definitely lived up to what I imagined it would be, but I will say I never thought that I'd be doing it alone as a, as a solo female traveler. Um, I always thought that I'd have a partner or like a friend to travel with. So when I first went out on my own, it was really difficult. I mean, it was a huge adjustment. It was, I was alone and I mean, I have my dog, but it was like every single day you do something amazing and there's no one there to talk about it with. And that for me was the hardest thing that I never imagined with the whole solo female van life thing was how do you have these amazing experiences and then have no one to just like share that with? Because they say experience is better when shared, but you know, in your head you're like, yeah, that's bullshit, you know? But then it comes crunch time and I've learned a lot about self-validation and I just never, I knew that bus life and traveling full-time would be incredible and I'd, I'd meet a lot of people and I'd see a lot of new things. So for the first two years of me living in the bus, I was definitely alone. I was someone who like picked a spot and I went there and whether it was for work or just me hunkering down somewhere, I was alone. It wasn't until last year that I like had my first real brush with like the van life community. And I met a group of people here actually at, at Bulldog Canyon and they within minutes became my best friends that I've ever made and I ended up traveling with them for like two months following that um, and it was it was super special and super beautiful and I every single day that I sat with them was just so blown away by how welcoming and understanding this community is I mean we're all living the same reality you know we're all living in these weird tiny spaces and and like I said before we're not conforming to that life script we're doing something completely different and that just basis of what you have in common is just allows relationships to flourish and I'm so grateful for the van life and schooly community it's unlike anything that I've ever seen in my life and I'm I can't wait to meet more people this is my closet bathroom area um, this whole door just opens and I have a mirror over here. So in here I have all my clothes, hair stuff, makeup, my little toiletry bag, um, shoes down at the bottom. And then the right hand side, I have this little bucket toilet, which I love. I just line it with a trash bag. And then I reach in here to my garage area and I use um, equine bedding product is what it's called. It's just these little sawdust pellets. They absorb all moisture and all smell. So I'll just throw those in there do my business, throw some more on top, and then when it's full, I'll find an RV place or a dumpster, public dumpster somewhere, and just throw it away. I use this bucket toilet pretty much every single time that I need to go to the bathroom. I would rather be in my own house pooping in a bucket than out in a gas station that's probably a little bit dirty and dingy. Um, I rarely ever find myself at campgrounds that I pay for where there's even access to public bathrooms. So I'm pretty much always going in this thing. If I feel like I want to go for a little trek outside and dig a cat hole, I will. But for the most part, I'm using this thing because it's just easy and it's in my own house and I trust it and it's right there, so why not? So in here, obviously I don't have a shower. Um, I do have a little, a little Nemo Helio camp shower that is just like on a little foot pump pressure system that I use outside a lot. Um, I'll just shower in a bathing suit wherever I am. I don't care what people think. I'll be out there soaping up whatever, whatever bits need to be soaped. Um, if I really want to take a shower at a Planet Fitness, I don't have a Planet Fitness card, but I will make a new email and use their free, <laughs> free day pass. Or I know friends that have like Planet Fitness, the gold card or black card, whatever it is. Um, otherwise I'm jumping in rivers if it's hot enough and just live in life that way. When I moved all of my stuff into this closet, it surprisingly fit really well. I thought that I had more stuff than I do. Um, I've accumulated more stuff living in the bus than I did before. So it's kind of, as you can see, it's getting a little bit crowded in here. I think that I maybe just need to like all these technical jackets I could probably curl up and put in my garage storage with all my camp stuff and it would free up some space, but I just haven't done that yet. Um, so yeah, I didn't really need to downsize too much when I moved into my bus. Everything that I have in here is everything that I own, which is really awesome. And it just, like I said before, it's just me and my dog and everything fits super well. So it's, it hasn't been too, too bad to move into the, the bus life. 
So underneath here is my garage storage from that you can access from the inside or you can also access it from the outside. But this door just opens. This side I, or to the left, I have all of my tools and to the right is all of my camp stuff and all my jewelry making stuff. This is my bedroom. It's my cozy place. I love it a lot. Um, this is just an eight inch twin size memory foam mattress that I got at Walmart. That is the comfiest thing I've ever slept on. Um, I have my bookshelf back here, which I clearly love books. Um, I have novels, I have field guides, I have biographies. Um, I have a lot of things. I love to just lay in here and read on a cold, rainy day. Um, this bookshelf is pretty much the same as my kitchen shelf. It's just a, a pine plank sandwiched between two other little pine planks. Um, and it's held up by industrial brackets and also screwed into the back wall with screws like every two inches just to make sure that it's nice and strong. Um, over there I have like journals and a headlamp and some pepper spray that stays by me where I sleep. And this side is my carbon monoxide detectors. And this is Bo who takes up the whole bed like this every single night. <laughs> These up here are sort of just resting. I mean, they're definitely not screwed in any way, shape or form, but I cut them just big enough to kind of be smushed in here. I saw a build a while back where they had a whole wall that was a divider of just like birch branches and I, I really loved it. So I kind of did my own take on that. This is um, cactus skeleton and this is just a piece of wormy wood that I found at the National Bison Range. Um, and I just thought it was really beautiful, so I cut it up and I stuck it in here. Um, and there's some on the front wall too. And I just love it. I think it's really pretty and it just adds more texture to the space. So when I first bought the bus, um, I originally thought that I'd be buying a, a van. I did not think that I'd be buying a bus at all. And I felt that I was severely lacking with passenger seating. Um, so I took one of the old like double seater bus seats from my demolition and just propped it up here. It has two seat belts on it. So technically I have three legal seats in here, um, but Bo has taken over this space as the co-pilot um, co chair. This is just bolted straight through the bottom of the bus. Um, I just drilled pilot holes, went underneath with a bolt and a nut and screwed it on. And I mean, it is like, it is very sturdy and if I want to transport other people, legally I can, or as legal as possible <laughs> with this sort of setup. Um, but it's also just where Bo stays on long drives. He hangs out up here with me, so I'm not lonely. I think if you're considering the van life or bus life or nomad style in whatever way you choose, I think that you should know that it really teaches you a lot about your own resilience. I've, in this bus, I've had some of my highest highs and some of my lowest lows, and it's, every single day brings something different, and it's, it's not easy. A lot of people will sit here and say, oh my god, van life is fucking rad, and it is, I swore, I hope that's okay. Like, it is rad, but it's also really difficult. It's not easy, it's, it breaks you down, you're, rig breaks down. I have a flat tire right now that's just patched that I have to spend $500 to get a new tire and I don't work, you know, I sell jewelry when I can, but um, I really think that, that being in this bus has taught me more about myself than I could have ever imagined possible. And even if you do it for a month or two, it's gonna, it's gonna test you and it's gonna push you and you're gonna learn so much about yourself and that is the most valuable thing that you could ever have in life. Thank you guys so much for watching and coming to see my home. Um, as I said, I'm a beginner silversmith and every single visit to my page means so much. So the link for that will be down below. Um, I really just have an Instagram, so it's pretty easy to click it and follow and say hi if you want.